Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Vandy Hazel back in another LBX Little Battlers experience video. If you enjoyed, don't like, comment, subscribe, and listen to Star Shall We? In the last one, we end up saying goodbye to all of our loved ones as we headed off to the NDR facility in order to try to stop their plan of launching a huge missile. So, we've gotten on to their underground dam, which is long and expansive. If you thought any of Star was bad, this is 10 times worse. So, yeah, we're having Rena gather, uh, navigate us while Devin is on standby with the Eclipse just in case things go awry. From here on, enemies could appear from anywhere. Be on your guard. Got it. And, yeah, so like I said before, I had, or at least I said in the last episode, I had trained all the way up to level 60 for this. You know what this place reminds me of? It reminds me of that one scene in The Incredibles back in the first movie where, like, you know, they're... They just escaped from capture. They're all running through that long ass hallway, and then they just happen to find a blimp, not a blimp, uh, what's it called? A rocket, just randomly sitting there. Yeah, there's the rocket right there. This is Saturn. You know, I just realized we have to make sure it never leaves the ground or we're toast. No shit. Saturn launch in T minus 30 minutes. Commencing final preparations. I repeat, Saturn launch in T minus 30 minutes. Commencing final preparations. We don't have much time. Come on! We gotta stop that launch no matter what! Well, this isn't gonna be fun. Okay, then. Well, we have 30 minutes to manage to stop the Saturn. Enemies could show up at any minute. I am ready to take them down. I do not have OP weapons equipped, unfortunately. But I am armed and ready. It's just a qu- Well, let's see if how armed and ready I really am. Yeah, like I said before, Angel Star is the easy one compared to this. Like, this one is so much longer. It's not even the fact that their LBX are higher leveled. It's just because of its length. But, hey, you know what? I like this battlefield that we're going to get to battle on. I think it's really cool, personally. So let's go ahead and start on it. Because you have this little... Cool. You have this little jump thing, and the field is still so much on both sides. And you can also fight on that jump thing. So I really like it a lot. Um... This place also introduces a new type of hover LBX because these guys have Ruby Queenish legs but aren't actually Ruby Queens, and I find that interesting. Can you all stand still? I'ma just blow them all up with a gun near strike unless they stop me from doing so. Don't kill, don't knock me down, please. Thank God. I also forgot we just recently got the laser guard too. Yeah, the laser guard was doing work. I don't know if it was just because Van was over level or over leveled or something, but I was taking one damage from any hit I blocked, and I don't know why. The laser guard was carrying. So, I guess now it's time to go over what the team has. I said before that Kaz and Amy both have rocket launchers now. Amy has the Red Bazooka 2, which is basically an upgraded version of the Red Bazooka, which does fire damage. Kaz has a large launcher, I believe it's called. Unfortunately, that means Kaz has two long-range weapons, so if he gets close range, we have to go save him, but, uh, Kaz is good enough on his own. I Frankly, I think I trust him with two long-range weapons compared to one long-range, one uh, close-range weapon. I don't know why I think that's the case, but I trust him with it. Uh, let's see. Then there's... D da I mean, Justin. I believe Justin has a two-handed minigun followed by two s dual swords. I believe Hans has a hammer followed by a minigun as well, and same with Dak, except instead of a hammer, he has two wield swords. So, you know, we're, and obviously I have my uh, standard retaliator with my uh, dual pistols equipped. So without, I guess it just goes without saying, we're ready. I'm taking this 100% seriously, outside of the fact I'm not using my OP weapons, which I'm, I count taking this seriously, because uh, not gonna use broken things that make this 10 times easier for me. However, I must say, um, as we progress towards the end, I kind of had, I did the math, I, out of all the chapters, this one's going to take the longest to finish, because if my math is correct, this one chapter will take all of my, well, will take up a whole week. Normally, the longest a chapter has ever gone is five days, so the fact that this one alone is going to take up more than just five days is the shocking part to me, but whatever. Let's just go ahead and continue down to the bottom floor because we have a lot of stuff to do once we get down there. So, yeah, we kind of need to get moving if you know what I mean. Yeet! All the way down. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen that many. Never mind. I was literally about to say, I'm surprised we haven't seen that many fights considering we've only seen two. Well, as I start talking. I haven't learned that lesson yet. That when I start talking shit, 
Things happen. I still remember that match against Sadie and how I survived by the skin of my teeth. But, like, Sadie has never caused me that much of a challenge. And the second I start talking shit, she's like, I'm not going to let you talk shit. And then proceeded to kill, all, almost kill me, sorry, in like five seconds. Can you not dodge, you son of a bitch? Ow! Wait, what LBX are you mixed with? What the fuck? That's not what a day. Day aces are not that thick. Okay, well, whatever it was, doesn't matter. It's dead now. Okay. Now we have to deal with this in-bit combination. Wait, oh, okay. I thought I saw another enemy come down, and I was about to say, what the fuck you doing? Okay, so anyways. Let's just get our levels. Get the medals. I'm not going to be able to buy more weapons, even if I do. It's not like it's going to mad... I should have paid attention to the map. I mean, I guess the good thing that there was a chest down here, but uh, I should have paid attention to the map and not have gone that far. Yep, so there was no point in going that way. Fuck. Okay, that's my fault. That's my fault. I deserve this. I wasn't paying attention. I should have paid attention. I will admit to that. But I feel like this is a little bit unfair. Actually, how fast would I kill them if I just did my dual pistol strategy? You know, this is not something I should be tempting fate with right now, because I know there's still a lot more to go in this chapter, but, uh, or at least this part of this chapter. If I really wanted to say, I could say this chapter takes place in, like, well, no, that's the thing, though. This chapter has the most locations out of anything else. You go to this NDR facility, you go, I'm not going to say where else, but there's two more areas left to go. You also go to, like, Tiny Orbit. You go to, like, all those places where everyone's having their final moments with their friends and teammates and etc. You go literally everywhere. Oh, my God. Don't run, you bitch. Oh, my God. He's gonna run? This is so unfair. Okay, there we go. I killed him. Okay. So, I guess I was doing better with the Retaliator in hand than I was doing with the, just the freaking spear. But, whatever. I guess I just learned not to do that again. Can you please go down without having to get... Yep, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Cool, so this isn't going to be too much of a challenge, I hope. Why am I talking shit? Why did I say that? Every time you say something is not going to happen, it's going to happen. Unless you say nothing is going to go good, then it's nothing is going to go good. I keep jinxing it. Oh my god. I am my own worst enemy. We can take this elevator directly down to the uh, basement 60th floor. Thank god they have an elevator. Sounds like that's our route to the flight deck. Come on, no time to lose. Right, let's head down there. Why are there 60 floors? I'm so glad that they have an elevator. Because imagine you have to go down all those 60 floors. That would not be fun. That would be hell. That would be the worst thing they could do to you. So I guess, why was there not an elevator on the other floors though? I, I, I can't, I couldn't tell you, but whatever. Oh, cool, we've already made it to this point. Uh, you know, I'm just not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything, because I was about to say something, and it was going to be a really dumb idea. So I'm just going to continue walking and pretend like I wasn't going to say shit. Although, if you kind of see this... We're about to see something very familiar from this place. Also, or, I don't know why. Every time I get down here, I feel like we're underwater, even though I know we're not. I mean, technically we are, if you count the hologram water, but, uh, you know... Well, wait, how low are we, though? Yeah, now I think about it, how low are we? Because if we're 60 floors down, are we underground? <laughs> well, one, are we underground? And two, are we actually below water and just the hollow, and then just the start of the uh, dam was just hologram and everything else is actually real water? I don't understand it at all. Whatever, which actually, I guess, leads me to another question about how Kaz was afraid to go in here. I don't know if Kaz is actively afraid of water or not. It feels like such a weird thing to be worried about if he's not afraid of, especially in this scenario. I mean, if he's afraid of it, I guess it makes sense for him to be worried about it now, but, bitch, we're about to, like, fight to the death with a bunch of terrorists, and this is what you are worried about. Not the, not the death, just the fear of water. I mean... Again, if it's a fear, I can see it, and if it's not a fear, then it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Besides, you know, Kaz not wanting to get his slick hair wet, but again, Kaz, your hair is like the least of our worries, along with your mortal fear of water, apparently. Like, I'm afraid of heights, and yet I would still come down here, because I'm telling you what, at some point in this, like, this is a spoiler. This is a spoiler, I will actively call it out. But at some point, we are gonna go really high up, and even I would be okay with this, and that's saying something. Uh, I mean, technically it's not a spoiler, because 
it's been shown in the game already. I won't tell you what scene showed it in the game, but we have seen it, what I'm referring to, so uh, take that as you will. Um, I guess we're fighting moral base. You know, it just occurred to me that if I really wanted to, I could withdraw from these and save myself some time. It's only been 10 minutes. What the fuck? Well, I was gonna make a bit earlier and say, like, okay, guys, we only have officially 30 minutes to beat this chapter, or at least this part of the chapter, so, uh, you know, we officially stop the missile, but, um, yeah, no, that, I guess, is guaranteed to happen, because I'm telling you what, right now, we are very close to that area, and I thought we were gonna at least make it to the 20 mark before we actually get there, but apparently, I was wrong. Even with all these encounters, I've actually been managing myself pretty well. Then again, though, this is not the worst amount of encounters I've fought. Can you not do this right now? Okay, in hindsight, I, I should have saw that coming. I don't know why I didn't dodge. Okay. I'm kind of tempted to use Asgard Airstrike, but, uh, not really. Okay. Okay, Cass just wanted to run randomly, but whatever. Get our levels. And cool. <clears throat> okay. Onwards to the next room. And this is where you're gonna see something familiar. So this room right here, if you don't remember, this is where we end up getting Proto Xenon with Justin. So the fact you get to come back here is really cool, but we're not gonna go the other way. Instead, we're gonna go this way. Dan, what's wrong? Why did you stop? The control room is through here. I know. I just got a real feeling. Hmm? Van, behind you! Uh-oh. A new OPX model? No way. So, we're fighting a new OBX. Um, cool. No visible controller, I guess. The AX03, codename Fairy. Commence interruption. AX03? The upgraded version of the AX00? So they finished it already? You know about this LBX? Fairy is an LBX capable of autonomous movement. Autonomous movement. Oh, it's based off of V mode I saw? I see. But this has to be. This is a finished product. There's no doubt that there's a, a link between Fairy and the NDR's Fairy Tale project. How can people use LBX like this? This isn't what my dad designed them for. It's wrong. So, how this goes down in the anime is this is a three on, no, a four on one with Kaz, Amy, Justin, and Van. Amy and Kaz get like murdered immediately. And then, uh, you know, Van and Justin together take down Fairy. Fairy is an annoying LBX to say the least. Because while it, it, one, it's another one of these LBX that has the, um, you know, the long ass health bars to take. Can you stand still? It, it's one of the ones that has the long ass health bar. One, it's also a Strider frame, so it's fast as fuck. Or at least I think it's a Strider frame. Based off its speed, I wouldn't be damn surprised if it was. You know, I, I want to show off on Asgard Strike, Air Strike again. Can I please hit it? There we go. So, not only is it one of the fastest LBX out, or one of the faster LBXs out there, but also, in the anime, this thing actively turns invisible on every occasion. It is the most annoying thing I have ever seen, and I actively hate going up against this thing. One, because of its health, two, because of its speed, three, because it exists. So, fuck you. I don't know why Instant Reload is even a move. I feel like it's not needed. Oh, wait, I think it... Oh, wait, no, I just remembered. Instant Reload... I think Instant Reload's probably like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong if you know this, but I feel like Instant Reload's like, at any point while Instant Reload's up, while you have to reload, it does it automatically. I'm not so sure, because I never needed to use it, but, because I reload pretty fast or whatever. Can you just, don't you fucking, stand still, stand still, just let me kill you. Let me kill you, thank god, that wasn't that bad. I hate this thing, I'm glad it's dead, I've accomplished my goal. Yay, how long did that take? It took a little bit over a minute to get rid of the most annoying spawn from hell. What is this place? This is the facility's control room. So why is nobody here? Re Rena. I know, leave it to me. Okay then. 
I should still be able to access the launch control system from here. Well, can you do it? I... I don't know. Oh no, but we've come so far. We can't do anything from here. They must be controlling it from somewhere else. We have to find out where. Oh, shit, we've been locked in. It's locked! So this was a trap. I wouldn't call it a trap. I prefer to think of a gift to you. No, wait, no, 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 Lex, don't do this. Lex, no, please no, don't tell me. After all, it's thanks to you that everything won't went just the way I planned. Oh, God, Lex, don't do this, please. You can watch the end of the world as we know it from the best seat in the house. No! Well, I... You know what? I'll just let the game explain itself. Lex, what's going on? You really haven't figured it out yet? I have! Everything you've done this part has, has been a part of my plan. My android Kylo was particularly inspired. Had you fooled, right? You were the one controlling him? Yeah, and if you don't know what that means... Then that means Lex is the head of the NDR. <laughs> Why? What are you doing this? <clears throat> you really are naive, kid. Even though I thought you'd had things worked out by now. What is the meaning of all this, Lex? You know, this has been kind of fun. Playing the CIO and the NDR off against each other to get the platinum caps on the Manuid GX. Watching you run around trying to save the world has amused me. But why, Lex? Why would you do something like this? I wanted to spend some time with you to see. I wanted to see if the world was worth risking everything to save. What? However, now I know. It's not worth it at all. Hey! This world has become completely worthless. That's why I'm giving it a fresh start. A clean slate. I want a better world to rise up out of the ashes out of, out of a broken society. What made you hate the world so much that you would destroy it? Yeah, Alex! And also, what the fuck, dude? He just... That's 4D, no, that's 5D dimensional chess. He was playing chess to the point where he was just playing against himself. Telling you won't change anything. Now, just sit back and watch the birth of a brand new world. Lex was really our enemy all along. Wait. Um, okay, well, the countdown's not helping. Shit. Um, guys, Rena? Rena, hurry! Hans is just trying the door. <laughs> Shit. Lift off. This can't be good. So, I guess I finally get to say what I've been wanting to say for so long. I've known this for a while now because I've played the game before, but what the fuck, Lex? Dude! He... Betrayer? Well, I have a lot of questions, but... I, I, okay. What have you done? Impressive, isn't it? Now it's time for the fireworks, but I need to be on board to finish my plan. We're doing up the 4th of July, it was two days ago, so I guess that's appropriate. As such, I'll have to leave you now. Do enjoy the show. Don't worry, once it's over, that door will open again. You're really gonna go through with the fairy tale project? Fairy tale project? Oh, you must mean the plan my Kaido android made up. No, I have my own ground plan. Your own plan? Um, I think we're all fucked is what's about to happen. It's no use, Van. We've designed the room to be secure. I've also changed the lock's code since you've entered. Oh, great. What? Huh? <gasps> Wait, who opened the door? Oh! Dad? Dad? Heh. <sighs> I should have known you'd get involved. There was only one person who could have opened that lock. Professor Yamano. It's a shame you've gone down such a dark path, Lex. 
but it's not too late to turn back. Don't do anything stupid. I think it's very much too late to turn back. You see, it was it was too it was not too late before Saturn was launched. After Saturn was launched, now it's too late to turn back. Looks like you figured out my plan already. You're planning to eliminate all of the world's leaders in one swoop. Oh! Oh, 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 that's far worse than just putting the place into a power crisis. You're going to use the Saturn to attack the World Summit being held today in End City. What? You are correct, of course. I would expect nothing less of you, Professor. However, you can't stop me now. Um, ah, I see. What happened to you, Lex? When we worked together, I'm sure I told you something important. I told you that powerful technology must be accompanied by a strong conscience. It's been a while since I've had one of your lectures, Professor. However, I have no need for a conscience. I lost that 18 years ago. What happened then? That was the time I threw away my conscience and was set on the path to becoming a monster. Okay, well at least he admits he's a monster. <laughs> Not something I should be laughing at, but whatever. 18 years ago, there was an accident at the Neo Energy Research Center that, met, that was under construction. That was the beginning of my living nightmare. Reports estimate that casualties mem num and numbers of the tens of thousands. This unprecedented disaster has caused despair, not just to the victims, but also to their friends and families. The government has stated that the suspected crime causes negligence on behalf of the construction company. They blamed everything on the architect who designed the building. That man, that man was my father, Ted Hiyama. And as if it was blamed for the incident by the government wasn't enough. It, the news was also full of many abusive comments from the victims' families. It was unbearable. Well, okay, it looks like he got injured too, so I feel like the man has suffered enough. But, you know, I guess people are kind of a little bit douches about this. In the end, my father... Oh! Oh, so he had a sister. Well, now I feel even worse. I did nothing wrong. Please believe me. Those are my father's last words. I was only ten. But I was labeled the son of a murderer. Okay, well, to be fair, he also died. Everyone should go a little bit easier on the kid. I couldn't go to school. My family was torn apart. I resented the world for what it had done to me. They had cursed me and my family to live a life of agony. Okay, Lex, just because bad shit happens to you doesn't mean you have to go murder ten or so powerful people. Several years later, I finally discovered the truth. It all came down to Silly and Kaido. Oh! Oh, wait, no, I'm starting to put a piece together. In an attempt to, cur to curry political favor, he had rushed the development of the facility. It was all his fault. I promised my father that I would make those who had destroyed our family feel that same pain. Since then, I've sacrificed my whole life in the pursuit of revenge. Lex, I had no idea about your past. So if Robot Kaido was controlled by him, does that mean Lex killed the real Kaido? Uh, Justin, you want to get some payback? Even so, that doesn't mean we have to, you have to go and do something like this. I just don't get it, Lex. Indeed, Kaido was gone. He was the one who wa you wanted revenge against. What more do you want? My revenge isn't complete yet. If I leave things the way they are, the same mistakes will just be repeated. What? Tyler, while I was digging up dirt on Kaido, I discovered something. Oh, okay, this isn't good. Warfare management, correct? What? You really do know everything, don't you, Professor? Oh, okay, so he's gonna start a war? I'm sorry, why? What the fuck, dude? Dad? Even war, er, sorry, every war currently being waged in the world is actually managed by a handful of powerful nations. More precisely, they are controlled by a small group of dominant individuals eager to protect their own interests. What? Precisely. Silly and Kylo was but a small part of the corruption that plagues the world. The problem goes much deeper. My true enemy turned out to be the world itself. So I had an idea. Okay, well not everyone in the world is a corrupt motherfucker. You don't have to murder everyone. If the world lost all of its leaders, people would have to think hard about what they want for the future. Okay, but that's also just murdering random people. I plan to give the, them the chance to do so. In the whole So, my camera glitched, but all you missed was just Lex saying he's gonna send a message to the leaderless world, I guess. Um... I, I don't even know what to say. Anyway, enough talk. You'll have to excuse me. I must get my seat. A world changing show is about to start. If you pleased, if you plan to stop me, you'd better be ready to risk your lives for it. Without that conviction, you have no hope. This is the final mission for every one of us. It's all or nothing. I really should have called this chapter all or nothing from that just statement alone. Um, 
I think we're fucked, if so this is that if it was something I can say. I managed to make contact with our support. The eclipse has landed. Professor, we're gonna head toward we're gonna head the Saturn to the eclipse. This is what I was talking about, baby. We're gonna have an aerial style battle! Rocket ship versus rocket ship! This is not something we should be happy about though. I'd like to accompany you. We can't send the kids into a dangerous situation without going ourselves. Oh, cool, so there is some logic here. Your help will be appreciated. Van, let's go. Whatever happens, we can't give up. Yeah, kind of because we have no choice because the world's about to be set into chaos. Yeah, together we can save the world. Debatable, but sure. Hurry, we need to get to the hangar and board the Eclipse. Fast! Um, yeah, because everything's kind of going to shit. Um, just remember this area. We'll have to come back here in the post game for something I mentioned earlier, but for now, um, let us quickly run all the way to the Eclipse. I think we're, thankfully we only have to go this way to get to it. We don't have to go, I'm not gonna fucking bother battling these things. One, because the episode's almost over. Two, the, we're in a time crunch, regardless of whether it's the episode being almost over or the time crunch or the fact need to get to the Eclipse. We're all like, this is a panicky situation. Lex turned on us, I've been waiting to say this the whole time. Cause when I first found out about this in the anime, it was not something I saw coming. It was genuinely something that shocked me. And I was like, what the fuck? Lex is, um, Lex is freaking evil? Nani? Why? And then, I, and then it pieced to me together. Because remember that time where Lex willingly chose not to dodge against Justin? Yeah, um, that's why I guess. He had this whole thing planned for some reason. So let's go to the eclipse, I guess. Uh, I, I, I don't understand anything anymore, but whatever. Oh, come on, another robot. Okay, so, um, I guess we're just going to do this. It's, we are, what the fuck, Lex, you monster. But, yeah, I guess, like, it, it's a whole thing, except my main question about this is, why, if Lex was playing both sides, why didn't he just take the Infinity Engine from us? Like, my, my argument, again, is, like, he did say he wanted to play around and see if we were worth saving at all, but, like... I, I don't understand it. I feel like he could have just made this so much easier on himself rather than, um, you know, uh, I guess play around with us. Another thing is, though, how long has the real Kaido been dead? Because if you don't remember that uh, chapter from earlier, with, uh, like at the end of chapter 6, where um, Devin was, like, dismissed from uh, Cillian's presence and then someone walks in, I assume that was Lex who walked in, but my question is, did Lex kill him then and there, or has Cillian been dead for a long time now? That's my question. But, whatever, I guess. I, I, I think this is just a situation we've been left with. Oh, hi, Eni. Get in there already. We don't have all day. Yeah, that's why I ran from everything that wasn't that last fight. <laughs> Mainly because I assumed that last fight was mandatory. Oh, hell yeah, the boss has music. Everyone, stations are go. Eni, take the center. Mimi, take the right. Everyone else, take the left. Oh my god, we have so many control pods. We are ready to storm the castle! Payback time! Oh my god, I actually do love this music. It's very inspirational. I have so many thumbnail options now. This is the eclipse? Sorry to rush you, but we don't have much time. I'll brief you all after takeoff. But for now, get to your seats. This will be the CIO's final mission. Yeah, because after this, we're all either dead or we've won. Take off! Eclipse! I'm telling you right now, this is already one of our longest episodes because it's been a while because this is about to hit 30 minutes. <clears throat> Hell yeah, we took off, baby! Allow me to explain our strategy. Once we've caught up to the Saturn, we'll deploy LBX to descend and board it. We're gonna board it? Okay, well my question is how though? Not a lot of us have wings. Only, only Van can actually fly now since Justin got rid of his wings on Xenon. We need you to use the control pods on the board on the on board the Eclipse to infiltrate the Saturn with your OBX. 
so it's an assault. Awesome! Yeah, if it goes to plan. Thanks to Professor Yamano's hacking of the NDR system computer, we have managed to get a hold of the schematics for the Saturn's interior. Oh, cool, so we can just get in there then. Our first objective is to suppress the Saturn's formidable laser grid defense system. Our OBX boarding squadrons will be will deploy force fields to cover the assault. Hells yeah! Force fields? It's a laser defense system that was designed by Tiny Orbit, alongside that laser guard you have. Oh, so I so I'm fine, but everyone else needs a laser shield. It should be able to neutralize any laser-based attacks, at least for a time. Once we are past the laser grid, the objective is the next objective is boarding the Saturn itself. Our point of entry will be the Saturn's LBX hangar. Once inside the Saturn, our units will aim to permanently disable the laser grid system as quickly as possible. Once the laser grid is down, the Saturn will be defenseless. Then comes phase two. Once inside, regardless of whether the laser grid is disabled, we must stop the Saturn. How we stop it is of no concern, even if we have to destroy it. It simply must not reach its goal. After suppressing the laser grid, you'll need to head for the flight dock. That should be that should be right next to the cockpit, where you'll find the Saturn's controls. So we're aiming to the for the cockpit. Got it. Wow, that's a full base plan. Well, everyone, let's get ready to kick some ass. That's the end of the briefing. We will commence our attack in 25 minutes. We should be in range of the Saturn in 15. Everyone should use this time to ensure that LBX are fully prepared. Let me know when you're ready. The code name for this operation will be Operation Daybreak. This battle will ensure the world sees another day of peace. Everyone will need to give a 110%. Okay. It's almost time. Well, that's some interesting shit. We have finally made it to like- No, fuck the quest! We have made it to the end game. We have made it all the way to the final p I'm not even gonna bother checking the quest. We've made it all the way to the end. I'm gonna quickly take some chats up with these guys, because I know what we're- Actually, no, I won't take it up with them. Because, you know, we'll continue this conversation in the next episode, but... God damn. This is hella stressful. So, I'm gonna end it here. We'll, we'll discuss this in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join Discord, follow Twitch. I'll see you all then when we invade the Saturn. Don't forget to battle on.